haben so vieles geschafft, wir schaffen das. Nobody can do it like me. Nobody. Yes, we can. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. Which is why I alone can fix it. They promise, promote, proclaim populism propaganda on sale today. Make America great again. Make love, not walls. Yes, we can. Let's exit Brexit. But truth is what pleases. And you, will you keep your promises? Heaven on earth, nothing would compare. But are you more than just another voice? You leave, you die, you chose death, and then silence. You're gone. And we're alone again. But there's a sound of that voice. He's risen. He is risen. For generations, the glimmer of hope has not faded. You keep your word. Surpass your announcement. Different from what we expected. More than we could have imagined. You keep your promises. So light reveals... Light creates orientation. Light can also be painful. Light protects against missteps. Jesus is the light. Come on. Jesus is the light on this earth. Let's give Jesus for that fact. The biggest applause in the house. Come on, church. Jesus is the light. Come on. I am super pumped, super excited. The title is, I am the light. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, my question right in the beginning is, what kind of uh, uh, image do you see in Jesus? Or for example, when you hear that Jesus is the light, what, what kind of a picture do you have in mind? I go some, some, some pictures and just think for a moment, which relates more to you? Is for you Jesus more like a praying Jesus? Like more the, the, the praying Jesus here? Or is Jesus more the sovereign Jesus? Or maybe the sunny boy Jesus? For some people, maybe the African-American Jesus? Or maybe more the modern Jesus, the Jesus with a lot of tattoos? It's not happened here. Maybe the risen Jesus? Or maybe Jesus is like the healing Jesus? Or maybe some people say, no, for me it's more the crucified Jesus. You know, I think every one of us, we have some certain image who Jesus is and how it was. And I want to go uh, in the first part of the message a little bit into the background because for me, it's very important to understand why Jesus said, I'm the light of the world because in the Jewish context, it was like a shocking statement for the Jewish people. For you and me, Jesus is the light of the world. Okay, light is good. Without light, we are in the dark. Okay, but if you don't understand the background, the whole message becomes another meaning, another level. And then in the second part, I want to explain you what light really means. What is the difference between a shadow and a light? Let's go into some questions. When did Jesus say, it? I am the light of the world? It was on the eighth day of the festival of the tabernacles. The Jewish people, they celebrate once a year an amazing a party of eight days. They came together and they built some houses in the desert. Uh, and they, they, they lived for one week in that houses and they had no roof, no roof. And every night they looked up to the skies, to the heavens, and they remind themselves, we were 40 years in the desert. But there were not one single day where God was not with us. The presence of God was all over. We came empty, but now God blessed us and we have everything what we need and what it takes. And in the Exodus chapter 13, verse 21 and 22, it's actually the context of the tabernacle's party. By day, but the day the Lord went ahead of them, in a pillar of clouds, can you imagine every day when they were walking in the desert, 50 or 40 degrees, it's like, uh, it's like an umbrella. Umbrella, Ella, Ella, E. Eh. God was like an umbrella, E, eh, E, eh. every single day. That means protection from God. The second thing, it was like a pillar of fire. Can you imagine at night there were, there were no electricity, no lights and everything. God was saying, I am the light. I'm leading and guiding you. And here the Bible says, not one day the light was always there. 
in front of them, and the pillar was every day they were surrounded. In the, uh, the festival of tabernacle, the whole family, everyone was remind themselves the presence of God was every single day with us. There wasn't one moment when we felt like split it or God was far away. The second question is, where did Jesus say, I am the light of the world? It was in the temple near the treasury. In John chapter 8, verse 20, you can see one word who says he spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offering were put. I just read this, say, okay, a temple is a temple, but the, the place where Jesus taught was actually um, very, very important. Here is the temple. And um, what's happened with the temple? Here is the temple, yes, good. Here in the temple, there were two entrances, two entrances. One entrance was only for men. You see, in this side, only men were allowed to enter into the temple. This was a big deal when you are a woman because you could not go there into the, that part of the temple. Jesus actually walked to that entry where men and women were allowed to go into the temple. And Jesus stood here, maybe here in, this, in the middle, and he was surrounded with four pillars of fire. Because the Jewish people every year, they believed when Solomon built the temple and when they opened the temple, God came down with fire. When a fire came down, they were not able to serve anymore in the temple. They were fall down in the presence of God. For many, many years, the Jewish people in the festival of Tabernacle, they came together and they believed and they had a longing that the presence of God, the fire of God comes down in every area of life. And now Jesus walked into that place where women and men were allowed to go in. And he said, when I, when I bring the word of God, everyone should have an access to what I'm saying right now. And this is like in a context for Jewish people, it was so sharp and so prophetic. The next question is, what happened on the eighth day of the festival of the tabernacle? What happened on the eighth day? Seven days. They were, came together like in the desert, but in the eight days, there were the festival of fire sacrifice. In the eighth day, they lighted all the lights and the people came with lights and candles and everything and they celebrated actually for one day in Jerusalem. And they said the light was so, uh, so light you could see in the hills of Galilee all the lights in Jerusalem. It was so, so full of lights and they were celebrating and dancing. And now comes the question, why? Why did the Jewish celebrate at the Festival of Tabernacles? Two reasons. God protected them in the desert with a column of clouds and God led them in the desert with a pillar of fire. You have to understand, in every festival in the Old Testament, it's a meaning. We can easily misunderstand the point about the fire, about the context. We are not Jewish people, we are just here in Zurich, or you're coming from, from America or Australia. But for the Jewish people, they say, oh my goodness, the lights, you know, the, all the 40 years in the desert... In the presence of God, it's not about the light, it's about the presence of God. The presence of God was with us. He was leading us and he was guiding us. If you have a smartphone, please take out your smartphone. I want to ask you some questions right now. And it will be super easy. You will see um, that the page if, uh, where you can find the place where you can find the questions and you can give some answers. It's no right or wrong. I don't have really honest questions. Are you ready? Are you plugged in already? If you don't have a smartphone, bring a smartphone and a Bible or the Bible in the smartphone. We are church with smartphone and Bible. My first, my question number one is how strongly do you feel led by God? From one to six, one means I don't feel led by God, and six means I'm super led by God. Are you led? Are you feel led by God? Ten people already. You see the, the score: fifty-four presents already. Twenty-three. That's not twenty-one. It's almost 
sub 18? Oh wow. 55 still, 44 people already plugged in. And you can see it's very, very different. With other words, a lot of people you don't feel led by God. I think that picture of the festival could be your festival. You remind yourself, even though if I don't feel the presence of God is with me. The question number two. What do you wish for you for life? Like in the t drama, light on, light off, light on, light off. 7%, 4% light off, 3%, 4%, 96%. Okay, that's an easy one. Now um, comes a very, very interesting question. Would you like everything in your life to come to the light? <laughs> yes or no? Don't shock me. This morning I was surprised. 60% says yes. Um, this morning was 50-50. Swiss people, they may be on, more honest or they are, I don't know. 65, 65. That means, check this out, check this out. When I preach about bring everything to the light, that means one third of you will sing, good for you, pastor. <laughs> but I have certain things I keep for myself, you know. And... The next question, this is the last question, last question actually. The fact that Jesus is the light of the world makes you more brave, scared, or relieves me of pressure? Also, very good questions. 47% is more brave, brave, pressure, scared. Wow. 50%, they feel like released, more brave. That means, only half or, or, or more than half or only half. You know, you understand when, I, when I'm asking you this question because often we think when Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, you say, oh, that's a no-brainer. He's just the light. But just think for a moment. That means something for you and me, for our journey with God. Now, in closing, um, when the festival of fire was over in the eight days, and here comes actually the message, comes the moment when they turn off all the lights. And the festival is over. And you can sense it's like a drama. They're going home after eight days, saying goodbye to Jerusalem. And again, here comes the word again. They felt like the presence of God is still not here. How long should we wait for the presence of God? Is there anyone you can relate? You, maybe you prayed for more than one year for a miracle, for a breakthrough, for a healing, for a promotion, for a girlfriend, a boyfriend, for a child. And a year later you sit here in the Samsung home and say, Pastor, I love you, I love this building, but nothing happened. And you go again into the hashtag Jesus series, you fast, you pray, you believe, and you say, Years after years, and years after years, and years after years, nothing happened. And that brings you to the same position like the Jewish people by the festival of tabernacle. They left Jerusalem again. The presence of God is again not here. And now in that feeling, in that context, Jesus said in that moment, when Jesus spoke against to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness again. Will never walk in darkness again. But he will have the light of uh, the light of the light of life. This is amazing. This was like people were like, oh whoa. What are you, what are you saying? You will say, you are the fire from heaven, you the presence of God. She said, yes. I am. And this was an amazing statement for the Jewish people. And darkness will have no power anymore in our lives. This was an amazing statement of Christ in the setting, in the background, gives this verse a diff different and a broader meaning actually. What is the meaning walk in, in the light? It's very, very simple. When Jesus said, when you follow me, you will walk in the light. Light means, when I'm in the light, nothing is hidden anymore. That means I start to reflect the light on me. All the shapes and all the colors, the way I am, comes more and more, more and more, more and more revealed to everyone. 
But even though if the light Christ is in me and lives in me, I can turn around. What happens when you turn around? There is a shadow. A shadow means Christ is still in your life, but instead of looking to Christ, reflecting Christ, worship Christ, praying to Jesus, you turn around all of a sudden and you say, I'm doing my own way. I think everyone on each of one has maybe an area where do you have a shadow. And a shadow means I'm not in the light, I'm not free. Some people, they're still in, they're looking porn, or some people, they're in, in drugs, or some people, they're stealing, they're lying, they're not honest, or maybe beneath their soul, they did certain things, but nobody knows about it. You know, I, I was in uh, Rio de Janeiro some month ago, and uh, a guy told me, asked me a question, he asked me, are you real, are you real? That means, you preaching, your story, they are, are they real? And I have to be honest, I, I, I didn't understand what he was asking me. And this is always good when you, people ask you a question, ask a question back. I asked him, what do you mean by real? He said, you know, I, I attended a church for many, many years and was a big church. And there was one of the elder, eldership. And every Sunday he was by the door, he greeted people with an amazing ties. And, and we was dressed very well. And he was there year after year after year. He was one of the, 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 the role model in our church. But one Sunday he was not there anymore. And the next Sunday he was not there either. And after one month, it came out that he was a drug boss. He sold drugs in Rio de Janeiro. And one day the police was searching him and with the helicopter, they were searching him and out from the helicopter, they shoot him. And I said, oh my goodness. The question was, are you also a shadow pastor? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you have some shadows in your life? Like sleeping pills, nobody ever knows, will figure out that you take sleeping pills and there's so shadows in your life. And I learned something in the early years and when I was a believer. You can focus on the negative things in your life. You can focus on the demons or the habits or whatever you have. But you know, it's so easy to get free from the habits, from alcohol or porn, whatever. It's just turn around. <laughs> turn around. Just turn around. I know you're thinking, oh, Pastor Leo, is this so simple? Then it will be simple. Yeah, it's simple. Turn around. Church, church, turn around. Just turn around. Turn around is actually a position where I'm looking at Christ. I'm staring to Christ and I look to Christ and I'm so happy about Christ. The best picture actually is the story of David in the Old Testament the King David he was a worship leader he was excited about God you know when the day when they brought home the the, the, uh, the ark he was dancing like crazy and the wife said oh I'm, I don't like it it's, it's like oh my gosh he said I don't care when the presence of God comes back in my town I'm so happy but one day David was not in the war and he sent all the soldiers into the war he was at home and he saw a lady and he had an affair with that lady. And unfortunately for him, she got pregnant. And then he thought, what should I do? He sent her husband into the front line in a war and that husband died. And for David, he thought, oh, it's good. Nobody will ever figure out what happened behind the scene. But there is always a God who sees everything. David was hiding like in the shadow he was hiding like a shadow. The worshiper, the king of God, had an area where it's some shadow in his life. And one day a prophet came and said, you know, there was a guy, he did an adultery and he killed the guy. And the prophet asked David, what should we do? And David said, kill him, punish him. And the prophet said, oh my gosh, that's you. And at that moment, David confessed his sins. In Psalm 23, verse 12, Two and five, and I love that psalm from David. It's very honest for the shadow people. Blessed is the one whose sin to the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is not deceit. 
When I kept silent, my bones wasted away throughout my groaning all day long. For a day and a night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was saved as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover you up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And that's a powerful statement. You can hide your shadow, hello, shadow, hello, shadow. But God sees everything. And the best illustration for me as followers of Christ is the sunflower. I love the sunflower. You know why? Because the sunflower looks exactly like the sun. Like what, what, what does the sunflower when in early in the morning the sun gets up? The sunflower looks to the sun. When the sun is moving, the sunflower moves as well. And when the sunset took place, the sunset's head bows down like worship. They're looking down and say, oh, the sun is right now in Australia. <laughs> and I know it's only a matter of time. When the sun rises, the sunflower looks again and moves with the sun. This is actually my picture of worship. Don't turn around, look at your weaknesses in your life or your obstacles in your life or your um, whatever. Just turn around and look to Jesus. Start to reflect the light of Christ in you. I wrote down two sentences. The, li the light drives away all the darkness. Light will always drive away the darkness. Can you bring the next slide, please? And the light reveals the shape and the color. This is amazing. When I steer into the light with my human being, I, I can only see a certain uh, radius of the light. But God sees the whole aspects. That means God sees even more in me than I ever can see. And follower of Jesus Christ means I want to be a light of God. You can either reflect. The next one could be dispersions. The next one, observation. The next one could be refraction or a double refraction. But what I believe the better image is we are a diamond. And a diamond cannot shine with him. A diamond is not able to shine by himself. And a diamond very raw, very raw, is not able to shine. The day when we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, we were raw. We are forgiven. Our names are written in the book of life. We are saved. But we are raw. You know what Jesus does? And you, you bring out the glory, the radiance in a diamond. You start to polish a diamond. And I know nobody likes the polish moments when God polishes you. I don't like it, to be quite honest. It's not that God kills you, that God hates you. When God reveals certain things in you, it doesn't mean that God hates you. The polished things in our lives is a never-ending story. You know why a diamond doesn't? Because after a while of the edges, a diamond starts to shine so bright. So bright. I cannot shine by myself. It's when I'm polished. The light comes in me. Christ comes in me. And all of a sudden the world can see Christ lives in me. And I get from day to day the glory of God gets bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter and more from day to day. In the second Corinthian, this is an amazing Bible verse says, so all of us who have had the wheel removed can see and reflect the glory of God. We are able to reflect the glory of God. We become more like Christ. You know, even though as a pastor I have some areas in my life, I need the polished moments of Christ. I realized in the last couple, last couple of months, that I've uh, like um, one thing in my leadership, I don't like it. Sometimes I'm like a volcano. When we have a meeting and I'm, I'm, I'm maybe tired and I'm not agree or people, they make me mad or sad. I can boom, explode like a volcano. 
I mean, if Volcano, it's a cool thing if you are far away. But for those people in my leadership, they are burned. They are like, oh my gosh, it was quite heavy. And I sense like God said to me, this area we have to polish. We have to polish. And that's why I go into the Jakobsweg. I will walk 170 km for more than one week just with one dream and one vision I need to get free moment where the volcano is not a part of my leadership for the next level anymore because our movement is growing our church is growing our ministry is growing and I cannot live with that volcano anymore and I need a breakthrough moment but the good thing is I will not turn around and look at my weaknesses I will not look at my shadow I will turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, you bring all the colors and shapes in front and I need a miracle. And I know when God polish certain things or I allow God to polish, you know what happens? Here is an amazing quote and I want to encourage some people right now because often we think when you become a Christian, you get boring. The more corners and edges a diamond has, the more sparkling and radiant the stones become. Following Christ doesn't mean you are shallow. It doesn't mean you are a soft Christian. I have some edges and I am some rough, but I know when God polishes certain things, even then I become more like Christ. And even then, if I'm fighting maybe a year or two years, I'm longing for the presence of God. I know that the best days are not behind me. They're always in front of me because the light is leading me and guiding me and protecting me. And this is what Jesus is saying to you and me. And let's give Christ for that a big hand. Come on, church. Come on. I am in the light. I become more like Christ. God, I will trust your sovereignty when there is no clarity because I can't sit forever in my disappointment and pain. I'm going to stand. Fear loves to limit you. Fear loves to keep you where you are. Fear wants you to do what you have always done and never do anything else. Fear wants to shackle your potential and fear always wants to limit you. Jesus, I'm afraid. Jesus, let's do it. And there are moments when you are in a ladder, when you are facing an area where you're super afraid. Don't give up. Hallo und Grüezi. Ich bin Andreas und das ist der Timo und wir sind Teil von der TV-Arbeit vom ICF in Zürich. Und was wir hier genau so machen, das erzählt euch jetzt der Timo. Ja genau, wir zeichnen jede Woche unsere Gottesdienste auf und strahlen die dann auf zehn verschiedenen Fernsehkanälen mittlerweile über 40 Mal pro Woche im deutschsprachigen Fernsehen aus. Nicht nur das, wir nehmen auch noch zusätzlich 24 Folgen Story of Christmas auf. Das heißt 24 Mal wie Adventskalender zu Weihnachten gehen wir direkt in die Wohnzimmer von den Leuten zu Hause. Dann nehmen wir noch Musicals und Konferenzen, alles ins Fernsehen. Also eine mega coole Sache. Und wenn du Teil von dieser TV-Arbeit sein möchtest, dann bieten wir jetzt einen einjährigen bezahlten Internship an, wo du wirklich herkommen kannst, Teil davon sein kannst und lernen kannst, wie wir das genau machen. Wir freuen uns, von dir zu hören. Yes.